Okay. I think we can start. Welcome everybody to our second round back lunch here at the House of Decentralization. I'm very happy that all of you have, have arrived here and um, as I can see, uh, we also have grabbed some sandwiches. This time not in a brown bag, but we thought for uh, ecologic reasons uh, we can have the sandwiches without a brown bag. So today's topic is the um, is on regional development, on how to measure regional development, specifically with uh, different kinds of indicators. Um, we will learn about the current situation of uh, how you measure regional development, uh, how the situation is in Ukraine, um, and yeah, about some methods of, of, of data measurement in the situation in the country. Out of um, I'm very happy that uh, Jose Sabrera is with us today. Uh, Jose is uh, working with the RDPA team on, um, well, on regional development measurement, on regional development indicators. He has worked at the National Statistics Office of Spain for many years, um, and then also was uh, the head of a diff a different or several uh, projects in Moldova, in Romania, and in other countries that work on statistical data, on, on um, supporting national stakeholders and improving their database and measuring um, progress on the different areas. So I'm very happy that you're here with us today, and the floor is yours to give us an input. Um, like last time, we will have a, a 10, 15, 20 minutes input, 20 minutes input, and then we will have time to discuss, and feel free to then ask any kind of question or raise any issue for discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I would be very happy to have um, to give a statistics lecture, but I'm not doing that. So I will I will try to to explain what we are doing in the RDPA project. We we did in the previous uh, uh, CRDP project, and uh, uh, what's going on on indicators uh, in our big ULID thing. So uh, I would like to introduce these four points. Uh, the current use of indicators in the Ministry of Regional Development, what they do with these numbers. Uh, then very briefly I will explain some uh, theory about uh, indicators. I will uh, uh, mention what we have been doing or the plans we have for supporting uh, our beneficiaries. And uh, I think that's the potential for this uh, meeting to discuss about synergies of what different groups here are doing because monitoring is everywhere and indicators are everywhere. And then, of course, you will get a sandwich. So um, what is the current situation? The current situation is that there are lots of needs, information needs. Okay. So these information needs, in general, they include also in, in from, uh, indicators. They need indicators for monitoring things. I don't have to convince you that it's important to have numbers for measuring the progress, regional development. Uh, maybe you have heard about the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. This is the top list of indicators in the world, and it's excellent for us statisticians because we guarantee our jobs until 2030, because all countries have to calculate about 200 indicators every year, so that's perfect. So here in, the, in this country, there is hunger for indicators. Every policy is translated into a set of indicators. In particular, we have three regulations, uh, the decree of uh, 2015, decree 856, which is about the indicators for monitoring the regional development. Uh, it uses 64 annual indicators and 27 quarter indicators, which are collected from different sources. Then we have a draft which has been submitted to the government in, in July for developing two new indicators, the Regional Competitiveness Index, which has about 50 indicators, and Re Regional Human Development Index, with about eight indicators, plus all these decentralization indicators, the so-called Groisman indicators, so a number of indicators to understand the process of amalgamation. Okay? So we have hundreds of indicators which have to be collected. For what? We don't know what. Okay? From where? We get it from official statistics, from their stat, the State Statistical Office, which in your country has a very particular structure. In my country, it's very different. We have one National Statistical Institute and 17 independent statistical offices. 
which are not coordinated by the central one. So it's a disaster. In Germany, the situation is a bit better. You have 16 lander statistical offices plus one federal statistical office which coordinates. And here you have one statistical office in the center, which is the same in every region, but which does not coordinate very well what the regions are doing. So there are oblast statistical offices which have some degree of autonomy in uh, the disseminating data. So you have probably had the experience that when you want data at the lower than oblast level, so at the rayon level, you have to collect data from the 24 websites of the, uh, of the oblast statistical offices. Uh, data also come from administrative registers. Ministry of Education get, uh, collects data about schools, pupils, teachers, budgets, and this can be used for statistical purposes. Same happens with Ministry of Health, Ministry of Infrastructure. So we have uh, administrative records which are collected and could be eventually used for producing statistics. This is a modern way of doing statistics. It's cheap. But you need a very strong coordination from the state statistical office because you have to ensure that the ministries are using comparable definitions, similar classifications, and a methodology which is agreed with them. Uh, in the Scandinavian countries, Sweden, for instance, Sweden uh, does not do surveys, very few surveys. Mostly statistics are done from administrative registers, and that's very cheap. Uh, then we have ad hoc surveys. Okay? I will discuss about this uh, uh, survey on the quality of uh, accessi and accessibility of uh, services at the municipal level, which is a potential source we should discuss here. Then we have the tools. What do we do with the data? Usually, we put them in Excel files. I will show later uh, what is this, uh, how this work is done. Uh, it can be improved, and one of the things we have been working on is to put all the data together in a database. Okay? Very often you hear database as a synonym of uh, Excel table. Okay? An Excel table is not a database. Okay? A database is something which integrates data in some structured format and with uh, specific rules for uh, storing the information. So what we are doing is, uh, and we now have a beta, a beta version of a, a database called the Moresta, Monitoring Regional Statistics, a uh, database which has a lot of data. I will show a screenshot later. Then, what do we do with this? We should do analysis. But the analysis, unfortunately, is very poor. Okay? We'll explain uh, why this analysis is poor. Analysis is not reporting. Reporting is just one part of the analysis. Reporting is just disseminating, again, in a nicer format, the data. So now we have quarterly reports on regional development. We have one annual uh, report. And we have uh, one monitoring report on decentralization that you have probably seen, which looks like something like that. Probably you have seen this kind of monitoring with nice infographs. But this should not be the end. The end is that someone has to use the diagnosis. Someone has to use the analysis. And this is a part of the policymakers. So of course, uh, we can intervene in all these steps. Uh, there is a basic step which is producing the information. But the, the, the step which is crucial is how it is used. So we have to train users in understand data and apply them for designing policies. It's not useful to have thousands of data and not linking them to policy instruments, for instance. Okay, so that's something we have to consider. So in the Ministry of Regional Development, there is a bit of everything. There is a bit of data collection, a lot of uh, doing regulations, uh, some Excel manipulation, some reports, and some analysis. But this is the situation. The methodology is regulated by governmental decrees. Uh, how does it look? I think I have an example here. So it looks like a big, you can circulate it, maybe. It looks like a list of indicators explaining what kind of template it has to be used for transmitting the data. But it says nothing about what to do with the data. Okay? Personally, I think that methodology should, not, should never be approved by a cabinet of ministers. Methodology is a question for analysts, for statisticians. For, for someone else, not for ministers. Ministers are not able to understand methodology. Okay? So you will see, uh, in the EU, statistics are regulated, yes. But 
even Eurostat does not say how to do statistics. Eurostat says what statistics have to be produced, and every country decides on how they do. And they have their own methodologies, and methodologies are never approved by governments. Okay? Because that means that if you have to change the methodology, you have to go back to the cabinet of ministers. And ministers are not happy to review resolutions about formulas. In Ukraine, you have these uh, uh, state statistical, uh, sorry, these um, um, decrees, like the one which is circulating, and you have methodological resolutions of the state statistical survey, which is the right way of doing, of fixing a methodology. Then transmission, you see my, my face is crying. Transmission of data is like sending Excel files everywhere, okay? And the analysis is uh, quarterly and annual ranking reports. Just a few examples. This is what appears in this government uh, decree. Do you think that any minister can understand this? <laughs> Probably not. And it is wrong. It is wrong. They are now proposing an indicator, regional competitiveness indicator, which is based on many different indicators. And you make a very nice radar graph, you calculate the surface, and you make the ratio of the surface of the region with the surface of the best region. And you get this formula. Okay, that's nice. But if you change the order of indicators, the first becomes second, and you have different polygon with the same values, you get a different value. Do you think it's reasonable to have a regional competitiveness indicator that depends on the order of the list of indicators? Doesn't make any sense. But if you put this in a governmental decree, they will sign. So that's a big mistake, okay? So solution, the Ministry of Regional Development says, the list of indicators had not to be changed. Well, you invent a, strong for, a, a strange formula and then you invent a system to block this formula. I'm very much against this. Transmission. I cry. This is the way they transmit data. It's very nice for printing, because when you print, you have a nice space for putting by hand the date, and then at the end you have the signature. But this is not an Excel file which can be read by a computer. The computer doesn't make any sense of this. You don't see any, any spaces. This is what is even worse. It even set in the governmental decree. That means that all institutions take this file, they fill in, they send it, and then the poor guys in the Ministry of Regional Development are collecting these columns and putting them together in another Excel file. Why not think of open data and link open data? We have a wonderful website, open data of the government, with horrible files inside. Okay, so that's something we have to think. Transmission of files is not sending Excel files ready to print. Okay. Ranking. This is the analysis. Okay? I, I no, don't cry, but almost. <laughs> ranking, ranking, ranking. They like, everybody likes ranking Hromade, ranking regions, ranking. When you rank something, you can be up because you are doing better, or you can be down because others are doing better. So it doesn't measure your own performance. Ranking is nice for journalists. I'm sorry if we have journalists here. But why? Because it points the attention of something. But it does not help analysis. Ranking hides a lot of things. Just a few examples. This is uh, from the Groisman indicators. We have uh, four parameters. Kilki Sotehe uh, from less than 5,000 people and uh, the main ranking. So Zitomirska is the first one. In doing what? I don't know. Okay, but they are the first one. It happens that this ranking, which is number of ETHs with less than 5,000 uh, inhabitants, has almost no correlation with this. So why putting this indicator? Okay, so it's not a question of putting a list of indicators and deciding how to aggregate them in a nice single composite indicator. No, it's necessary to do some analysis of the correlation of the indicators which are inside. So if something is not correlated, that means something is happening with this indicator. So maybe we have to review, if it, is it useful or not for ranking region. Then these two indicators have a correlation of 97%. Number of territorial gromadi and surface. 
they almost are identical. Does it mean to collect it twice? Or we just want one? At the end, what happens? It happens that this ranking, this wonderful ranking with red, yellows, and red uh, and greens depend on two indicators which could be summarized in one and one which has nothing to do. Why? So that's, wor that's even worse. Imagine these regions. For, these are imaginary data. For six years, they are keeping the same ranking, OK? They rank, they rank out the same. In the first case, all the regions are improving. But these poor guys look very bad, always, even if they are all improving. So here, we have a process of convergence, which is important if we want to measure, for instance, access to services. It's important to have convergence. The ranking is the same. And here, we have divergence. And the ranking is still the same. That means that the ranking is hiding the trends. It's hiding the variance of the data. So ranking is useless. It's nice for pointing out some situation. It's nice to show that Scandinavian countries are highest in human development index, and Libya is last. But it doesn't, doesn't say anything about why the Scandinavians are better or the Libyans are worse. Okay? So ranking hides everything. Please don't choose, don't suggest rankings anywhere. Okay? <laughs> so we have to think about what is an indicator? What's a composite indicator? So I'm not going to explain what is an indicator. You all know what it is. The question is how to define and how to produce the indicator. So it's very nice, looks very nice on log frame matrices to put an indicator like quality and availability of transport infrastructure. Easing of doing business, that's a World Bank indicator. Uh, you know how much work is behind that? Behind this indicator, which goes to nice ranks, there are teams of experts in about 200 countries evaluating questionnaires, which are 40 pages, with case studies. That's a lot of work. You know how to produce this? Probably we need a survey. Okay, And a survey needs to to be done in a long list of steps, OK? So first, indicator. It's a combination of statistical variables. But we have to decide what type of variable we put in. Do we put an absolute values, like trade, foreign trade in one month? Or do we put the relative population, relative GDP? Or do we put percentages? Do we put rates of increase? Do we put cumulative values from January to March, January to uh, June, whatever. So we need some statistical analysis to understand which of the forms of the variable is more relevant for understanding the phenomenon. So again, the question is not to put the first indicator I find. But probably you have to understand different, different uh, formulas. When we want to define a composite indicator, we have first to check the list of relevant indicators. And we need some correlation analysis. Let's take indicators. If they are correlated, nice. They point in the same direction. But probably, we can minimize the number of indicators. If they are very correlated, we don't need them because they are redundant. If, we are, if they are not correlated, that means that they point different dimensions. That's very interesting. Okay? But maybe they are absolutely unrelated. So we, have, we need some correlation analysis to select the list of indicators. Then, what kind of measurement level? In former Soviet or centrally planned economies, the tradition is to put indicators like January to February, January, February, March, January, February, March, April. And then you are accumulating the trade and accumulating everything. Why? Because at the end of the year, there were objectives to be reached. That's why in all the countries of the region, there is a tradition of in putting cumulated indicators. If you check in Eurostat databases, for instance, you will not find any cumulative indicator. Why? Because it's very difficult from the statistical viewpoint to work with cumulative indicators because it, it hides seasonal patterns. If you want to compare one year with the previous year, you cannot use a deflector an annual deflector. You have to calculate a new deflector from January to March, January to April, January to... It's a crazy amount of work. Okay? 
but this is a tradition. Okay, so it's here. Why do not use logs, logarithms? GDP per capita in the Human Development Index is not used as such. It is transformed by the logarithm. Why? Because it's better to work with logs instead of with the absolute value, because some statisticians analyze it and say it's the good way to do it. Okay, so we need to analyze what do we put there. Then we put all these lists into one composite indicator. Which weight do we give to anyone? Currently, the weights are equal. You put, if you put four indicators in one dimension, let's say in uh, technology preparedness, nice dimension, you put access, I mean, number of companies using ICT, uh, number of companies doing innovation, and number of industrial parks. You put three indicators, and usually you put the three, you divide by three, that's, that means that you are giving the same weight. Does it make sense? We don't know, we need analysis. Okay. Then we have to decide on how do we aggregate the formulas. Something as well known as the Human Development Index has recently changed. It was an arithmetic average, now it's a geometric average. Because someone has done analysis and, and, sh and show that this is better. So we need, I mean, there is a lot of analytical work to be done before putting on the table of the Cabinet of Ministers a draft regulation, okay? So what is the process to produce indicators? We have clear steps. First, identify user needs. We have to talk to the users. What do you need these indicators for? Uh, what are you going to do with this ranking? Are you distributing funds using statistics? Are you just firing the governor of an oblast when, when uh, he ranks last? And what is the link between numbers and policy instruments. Then we have to define the concept. We want to measure quality and accessibility of services. What means quality? Is it the number of doctors per person? Is the quality of the premises? Is the number of uh, right diagnosis? What means quality of a service? What means accessibility? What does it mean? For what services? We have to define all these concepts. Once we define the concepts, we have to build the tools. Build the tools mean building questionnaires, building databases, the, the, the transmission systems, and so on. Then we collect. Either we go face to face to households or persons, or we collect the data from administrative registers. Then we analyze, we process the data, we validate, and finally we disseminate. So the statisticians, we have defined what is called the GSBPM, the Generic Statistical Business Process Model, which is a way to describe how statistics are done. And you see that we have uh, lots of phases and lots of steps to do statistics. So please, whenever you think of one indicator, think that poor statisticians behind that have to do all this, okay? So what are we doing with our beneficiaries? We are assessing the methodology. Every time they produce a methodology, we try to give advice on what to put in the list of indicators, how to analyze them. If something is better, uh, we can suggest proxies for other, I mean, just to improve the methodology. I have to say that we are not always successful, and sometimes even if we advise not to do something, sometimes, I mean, it's the decision, we cannot do anything. Then we are helping in the organization storage of data. There are lots of data uh, which are being collected. Unfortunately, they are not documented. Uh, now the current uh, database includes about 100,000 data. And we are doing trainings to the staff. So this is the database that uh, I spoke about, the Moresta. We have about 100,000 data already. And the good thing is that it can be used for uh, including data at different territorial levels. So now it's, uh, it contains regional data, but it could perfectly include rayon data or Etohe data. So it can just be defined and then we can store everything. So instead of developing new tools, I would like to suggest that we investigate the possibility of extending this tool for other exercises. So I try to finish now. Ideas. First, do less. We have to increase the efficiency in the monitoring process. Doing this report takes 20 days of one person. So instead of analyzing the results, they are just crunching numbers in Excel. 
So at the end, they do not have time to analyze it. So if we automate this uh, report, they should have time to analyze it. Okay? So they should do less in uh, processing. Then everybody should share more. So there is an interinstitutional working group, uh, sorry, interinstitutional commission for coordinating RD, where we have the Ministry of Regional Development, some line ministries, and the State Statistical Office. They only met once, but they should meet. And we are proposing to have a working group to discuss on monitoring indicators, both for regional development and for uh, decentralization. We should also use the unified system of storage. We should integrate with GIS. Many people, now we just had a meeting on the possibility of integrating some other GIS tools with the database. So uh, now tools are not proprietary. That means that software can communicate can communicate one with another. So we are using open source tools, so it, it should be easy to make things work together. Uh, one of the problems is that uh, when you see the list of territories and you want to mix them, uh, you have literal names. There is a code used by statistical office, which is called the COATU, which should be defined, but unfortunately, we don't have COATUs for uh, amalgamated chromatic. And then we should also coordinate among the donors. Uh, we have uh, just established a task force, uh, Roland is, is uh, uh, convening it, on monitoring. Uh, so all the people who are doing here anything related to indicators, we should share this information so that we don't work twice on preparing databases or other monitoring tools. We should also discuss the possibility of having surveys. Okay? Uh, one of these governmental decrees says that some indicators will have to be collected by the Ministry of Regional Development. That means that they will have to do a survey. And if they had to do a survey, they will have to go through this. And this costs a fortune. So instead of doing one survey for Jose for one indicator and one survey for uh, uh, Roland for another indicator, let's plan a survey. If someone is not doing it yet, let's plan a survey collecting the information needs of everybody else, because that will be very expensive. Okay? So we should discuss it internally. And then I think we should help the decision maker in understanding better the data. So visualization is nice. Of course, it helps. So maps, graphs, all these kind of things are nice. But my proposal is that most of the research analysis should be outsourced. In many countries, ministries of regional development or other policymakers, they just have a list of topics of interest for their for, for diagnosis of policies. So they just have these and the competitive tenders. And in this country, there are 664 universities and uh, research centers. So there is a lot of capacity for analyzing the data. So instead of having our three poor colleagues in the Ministry of Regional Development doing these kind of tools, it would be much more efficient if they just decide these are the topics of interest. Internal migration, uh, local transport, uh, smart specialization, indicator, whatever, and they just outsource it to researchers. The researcher would also do something more useful than what we are doing. Okay? So thank you very much. Uh, you already had your, your uh, uh, sandwich. So let's have uh, questions and answers right now. Thank you. Questions? We have another statistician here. That's nice. <laughs> Former statistician. <laughs> no, uh, uh, yes, my name is Kevin Alcudur. I'm uh, senior program director of EV. I used to work at Statistics Sweden in the 90s, calculating among other things uh, GDP of Sweden, national accounts. And I actually cooperated with the statistical officer in Ukraine between 1999 and 2003. I recognize all these problems. Uh -huh. uh, already, already. Yes, unfortunately, well, my opinion is that nothing happened in this field. Very is, little. Yeah, very little. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, you're right. Unfortunately, the state statistical office is weak. Yeah. Is weak uh, in coordination, is weak in technology. Uh, in methodology, they are not weak. Euro study the global assessment, and most of the methodology uh, is in line with European standards, which is good. But the association agreement between the EU and Ukraine uh, obliges Ukraine to go towards EU standards. So that means that 
the methodology has to be linked. But if we do not support, if the donors do not support the technology, and the government does not support the coordination role of the statistical office, there's nothing to do. So that's that's a, that's an issue. They are weak. Uh, I mean, at that time, the, the requirement to adapt the statistical uh, official statistic in Ukraine to the United Nations standards on national accounts, European standards on national accounts, was valid in mm -hmm. 2003. Still, uh, there is a lot to be done. Yeah. That was a comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah also my uh, comment, more, more comment or a question to, to encourage you to share a little more of your expertise. Um, instead of a technical question, um, what I'm uh, looking at is the uh, well, political and also commercial value of the data. Most of what you have uh, described of the problems and of the standards, this is it's more a technical aspect, it's more a technical process. Um, but when facing these, uh, these, uh, when, when, when facing that situation, when trying to cope um, with these challenges, I think we also need to take into consideration. We need to be aware of uh, some motivations which are upheld by some people because of some actual or perceived commercial and political value of, of, of information of data. So if you could elaborate a bit more on, on this, yeah. um, I Co think that would be... I would be say it. commercial value, of course, uh, but uh, most data are public, so there is no, no much business in, in data. Political interest, there is a lot, there is a lot. For instance, uh, in the EU, funds, regional funds are allocated based on an indicator, which is GDP per capita on thresholds. So there is direct link between statistics and policy instruments. In Spain, TVA is a, uh, half of the TVA is redistributed uh, to regions according to some formulas where we have a lot of indicators. In Canada, there is this uh, per equation formula where uh, federal funds are redistributed to the regions based on indicators. So there is a political, a very high political interest in statistics. If statistics are the basis for policy instruments. If policy instruments go on one side and statistics go on another, and uh, the problem is that when you cannot easily link policy decisions, which at the end are budgets, with statistics. So if you are able to find a database where you have budgets and statistics and you can make an analysis, then it's a very strong political instrument because you can see if the policy instruments are really addressing the needs of the country or if there are some other interests. But they are very, I mean, statistics is, uh, the name comes from state. The basis for state is statistics. The first thing a country does is a population census and national accounts. So Kosovo, when Kosovo got independent, the first thing they did is a population census because they wanted to have a country. What happened in Crimea? What well, was the first thing done there? Census. The census is a political instrument. So statistics is a very strong thing. Jesus was born in Bethlehem because Augustus was doing the census. And they obliged everybody to go to the place. So that's why uh, they were moving somewhere and there was a census in that time. So the census is the most important political tool of statistics. Uh, also, let me speak on the behalf of the general audience here, since I'm not a specialist. Okay, uh, as uh, this is the requirement of the association agreement to bring it to the EU standards, in your opinion, how long it will take to improve the situation? And uh, do you feel that local partners are open for changes? How responsive they are? I mean, it takes time. I mean, it takes a lot of time. Uh, in my experience, um, I was working in Romania in 2006 before they joined the EU. Uh, now, 10 years later, their statistics are fully adapted to EU standards. And Romania is a country with similar resources. Uh, here you have already applied the standards in statistics, so that works pretty well. The, Problem, the main problem is the absence of a population census here in Ukraine. That's a big issue. 
there is no population, I mean, there is a population register, which is not coordinated by the statistical office. That means that when someone is registered in a municipality, but working in Poland or in Kiev, nobody knows, because there is no link. So the data, the population data, at the very low level, are not of good quality. And the statistical office recognize that. What is the solution to do a census? But the census has been postponed in the last years because a census is extremely expensive in the way it is done usually in Nordic countries. And that would be a very nice experience to be brought here by Scandinavian countries. They do not do a census uh, with face-to-face -face interviews. They do, they co just merge administrative registers. And that's cheap. And then you do surveys, but you do this. And the Dutch, they do not do. And Spain, which has a similar population of uh, than Ukraine, 46 million people, we are moving. The next census will not be face to face, will be an administrative register based census. So that's where the donors can really support Ukrainian statistical system is let's help Ukraine have a very good population register and the next census based on administrative register. That would change a lot. That would be, but it takes time and money. Time, it takes time and money. How, how, uh, how good we are at explaining for the politicians and the decision makers that there is a need to have a unified population register for this? Is there any room for well, improvement when it comes to us? I mean, um, statisticians we are very bad in communication mm -hmm. because we go into technical things. And so we, we do not have this good. Uh, communication with politicians. It's someone else that has to do that. So, of course, it's very much welcome that donors and, and people are uh, convinced, people who are convinced of the usefulness statistics, go and discuss with the, with the politicians. I would not say that statisticians have to do that. Because in general, they are not good in communication. You have, I would be very interested in describe um, it um, uh, more the content of indicators for regional development, like what are the main classes? How can you measure regional development? On, on what do you measure it? I asked Lena to upload the file, just proceeded to show you. I was waiting for your question. Uh, so, where did you put it? Uh, Lena? Lena is not here. Where did you save it? The word document on Excel. The Excel. Ah, okay. Okay, so this is how it looks, okay? So um, this is nice, okay? You see, this is ready to print. Ready to print, but this is a copy of calculation. This could be also ready to print if you hide them. So they are putting twice the, the same numbers. So this is what is done. So for instance, you have Economicna effectiveness, okay? So this is one dimension, what is called dimensions. In this dimension, we have several indicators. This one is an indicator of industrial production, okay? Very nice. This is the value obtained from the statistical office, okay? So this is the um, indicator with respect to previous year, okay? So 110 means 10,9 percent more than previous, same period of previous year. Okay, then you have the volume of uh, industrial production. So here we have a rate of increase. Here we have an absolute value, and here we have uh, index of Siago. I don't know what is this, but it looks like another cumulative data, and this is number of something of Siago. Okay. So you have, in this case, seven indicators. If I'm not wrong, I think it's seven. Yeah, seven indicators in the same dimension, okay? So first, you take this value and you normalize. You normalize means that you set the minimum at zero, the maximum of 10, uh, at, uh, at 100, okay? So you normalize this data and you get this number, okay? So you see the formula, if you can read Excel formulas, that's something about normalizing between zero and 100. And then, manually, they rank 
this value. When I saw this, I wanted to cry because I spent a lot of time explaining them that there is a formula in Excel to run things automatically. No, but they still do it manually. Okay? So you manually rank from best to worst. Okay? And then you do these nice colors, greens, yellows, and red, based on this. But then you take this value, this value, and this value, and you average them, and you get this value for the main uh, dimension, OK? You get this value, which is an average. So you are dividing by 7. That means that you are giving the same weight to each one of these things. And then you rank again manually. OK? So what does it happen? You are normalizing between minimum and maximum, OK? Minimum is 100, and maximum is uh, minimum is, is 0, maximum is 100. What you see here, the formula? This formula means that here we have the maximum, and here we have the minimum. Okay. What happens if the maximum and the minimum are very close? If not, minimum and maximum are very close. That means that Minim maximum minus minimum will be close to 0. And what happens when you divide by 0? It's a big thing, OK? So if a variable is very similar in all the country, which would be, let's say, perfect convergence, this variable would have a huge weight here. Exactly, number of teeth. Take the number, average number of teeth as an indicator. Most people have between, let's say, 30 and 35, or I don't know how many teeth we have. Okay? So that means that the average, I don't know how many teeth we have. But the average is probably very similar. So if we took the indicator, average number of teeth, as an indicator of dental quality, which is an indicator of development, by the way, that means that almost all regions have the same average. So that means that this indicator is dividing almost by zero, so it has the biggest weight. Does it make sense? Doesn't make sense at all. Normalizing data hides convergence or divergence. So this th technical thing is full of interpretation mistakes. So can you imagine that every quarter they are publishing something with green, yellows, and uh, reds of everything? Of everything. So it's a big problem. It's a, also our problem. I, I, I think that this is my problem that I was not able to explain uh, really well these problems because they continue doing this. Okay? So at least if from our side we can avoid proposing rankings, that helps. Okay? This is this is nightmare. The the this kind of work because every month or every quarter we have a different Excel sheet. So if I want to compare last quarter with this quarter, I have to put together the two Excel sheets because they are not in a database. So what we are doing is taking pieces of this and uploading them in the Moresta database. But it takes life. It's more complicated than you. So please never trust rankings. Any other question? OK, so then, yeah. The access to Moresta is available? Uh, yes. it's. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, there is an interface for users. There is an interface for administrator, but it can be it can be used. But it's beta version. It's beta version. That means that uh, the contents has not been fully validated. Okay. But it's, there it was, is an access for there is an access, users yeah. to at least. Yeah, you can you can already. Can check. you also explain what we dealt, uh, how we dealt with the ministry when they got these PDF Excel files? How they were dealing with this information to produce this? Well, I don't have here the, the slide, but usually to produce this, to produce this, 
this is a PDF. This is a well. This is a PDF of a PowerPoint, and this PowerPoint here includes graphs. And behind the graphs, you know that in PowerPoint you have kind of Excel sheets. Okay, so one file like this, which is PDF, in fact has a lot of Excel things behind. This could be perfectly produced in Excel. You don't need uh, PowerPoint to do nice things. All this can be Excel. In fact, we did it, but they are not using it. So uh, sometimes I think that the most useful technical assistance that can be done, and that was my experience in Moldova and Romania and many countries, is training people in Excel. Unfortunately, this is the most useful thing very often. Yeah, but I just wanted to say that when we started to work with the Ministry of Regional Development, mm -hmm. they had 700 Excel sheets with uh, inside of every file there was another 10, 15, 20 sheets. And to find any information, to, to build an indicator, they had to go to every this file, they had to find it, they had to find the, the exact sheet to pick the data out. And that's how we came to the conclusion that uh, you know, if there is no one database where you can easily click, click, click on indicator on the years and, and extract information, you will, you will lose a lot of time of, of public service. That's how we came to the idea of developing of Moresta and actually did this. And unfortunately, it is not yet again being used because the people are, uh, regardless of the amount of training that we have delivered, they continue to work with, with Excel and with this sheet. I mean, we don't know how to break this, but <laughs> this is the So in fact, we can, we can act, and that's, that would be my summary. We can act in any one of these boxes. We can act in advising them on what to put in governmental decrees or what not to put in governmental decrees. We can support in improving the sources, as you said, directly with the statistical office. We can help in delivering tools like visualization, GIS, Morestas, Excel, whatever, we can improve. We can help them improving the analysis by doing relevant things and not rankings. And we should, we haven't done it, we should help in analyzing the data for diagnosis, not rankings, diagnosis. So we are in many different teams. Each one can do different things, but I think we should have this in mind. We, we can act in different steps of the production of the, of the statistical information. Okay, so thank you very much. If you ever need uh, any advice on numbers, I used to be on the third floor. Thank you very much. Thank you.